charcuterie board in the produce department. And I have a selection of fresh apples and pears around this time of year as well. And we also have a selection of tangerines, so they're going to make some really pretty pops of citrus color. The thing I'm going to do is in our produce department, we have a huge selection of nuts, which are amazing for charcuterie boards. So we're famous for our beautiful nut display, especially for our walnuts. So I'm going to go around and pick a selection. And I'm going to do an assortment of dried fruits. So they add a lot of really rich sweetness to the charcuterie board. They're a nice complement with a lot of the cheeses we're going to do. So here I have some dates and I'm also going to pick up some apricots because they add a lot of great color. When you're starting to do a cheese board or a charcuterie board, the important thing is to first kind of decide um, what you want your base foundation to be. So you could do something like a wooden cutting board. They're really pretty. They add a lot of warmth. Um, we also like to do things on slate, so they're great for cheeses, um, they keep the cheeses nice and cool. You could also just do a simple white platter, um, square or round or gray. So we recommend doing between two to six cheeses depending on how big of a board you're doing. So if it's just two people, you could start with something as simple as two cheeses up to six. But the most important thing is picking a selection of cheese type, which means um, hard, semi-soft, washed rind, blues, uh, creamy. Also doing a selection of milk types, so cow's milk, sheep's milk, goat's milk. Breads, crackers, and toasts are essential part of a cheese board. You need something to put your spreads and your tapenades and bruschettas on. So we have some focaccia toast, a nice crostini toast, and also some breadsticks. Today I have a slate board. I also added a small wooden board for some different texture. And what I like to do is put the cheese and the meats down first. They're really the anchors of your board and they're what is going to be eaten the most of, so you need the largest quantity of those items. I think it's nice to put a lot of your antipasti items into small bowls because they tend to have some liquid that you don't want running into your cheese items. So when you're arranging your cheese board, you do want to think about things that complement each other and trying to arrange them next to each other so your guests at the party can um, experience those flavors together. So we have a tangerine, which are great this time of year for a nice bright citrus punch of flavor. So for the toasts and breadsticks, I love to put them into a glass so they stand straight up. They add a lot of height to the board. So even though we're giving you a lot of tips today for how to build a cheese board, there really is no exact science to it. I recommend really placing things down and you may be able to even move them around to see what colors and textures look good next to each other. It's really up to your own creation. A great tip is if you can build the board right onto the tabletop or island that you're going to serve it on, then you can allow some of the ingredients to spill over the board, which gives it a really nice natural look. And then the last part that is really um, what makes, I think, the boards really special is if you add some fresh herbs to it, it also helps to fill in some of the gaps. You want to make sure you also offer a selection of serving utensils, so things to scoop out the spreads, pierce the olives, crack the cheeses, cut the cheeses. So a variety of serving tools is nice. It's a nice touch if you could label your cheeses either with a little cheese tags or sometimes I like to write it and put it right next to it on the ground of the board so that your guests know what types of cheeses and maybe what type of milk it's made from. 